In lab today, we're going to look at the resonance in a series RLC circuit. In previous activities, we've measured the capacitance of this capacitor. It's labeled 50 microfarads, but we've measured it to be 56.3 microfarads. And in another exercise, we measured the inductance of this inductor, and we'll use 892 microhenries for the inductance. And then this is a uh, labeled a 10 ohm resistor and I just measured the uh, uh, resistance with a multimeter to be 10.08 ohm so it's uh, pretty accurately labeled. So what we're going to do is we're going to be putting in an, an AC signal across all three elements and we're going to be measuring the current going through here as a function of frequency and the way we'll measure the current is actually to measure the voltage across this uh, last resistor. So I have these two leads set up uh, from the signal generator and I'll be able to change the frequency and I can measure that signal on channel A of the oscilloscope and so channel B on the oscilloscope I'll just put across only the resistor to measure that resistance. And to get rid of any effects on uh, the function generator not being able to put out as much current as we might want, what we'll do is we'll just measure the ratio of those two voltages and, um, and see how that affects the, um, the current. So we're going to look at the ratio of the voltages of functions of frequency and find out where resonances occur. One of the other things that we will notice as we go from low frequency to high frequency is there'll be a phase shift between the current and the voltage in the circuit as it becomes more inductive or more capacitive. And that would be another thing we could measure, but we're not, not going to measure that uh, today. We'll just note that on the uh, oscilloscope. Okay, let's look at the uh, signal on the oscilloscope. We're at really low frequency now. I, I set it at 10 hertz, and so the inductor is acting pretty much like a wire. And the yellow trace is the voltage across all three components, and the blue trace is the voltage across just the resistor. So we're going to use that to get the current, and you can see that at really low frequencies, the current is leading the voltage by close to 90 degrees. What we want to do is we want to get the ratio of the voltage across all three components and compare that to the voltage across only the resistor and we'll see, see how that changes as a function of frequency. At 10 Hertz, it looks like the uh, voltage signal here is uh, five volts across all three. And let's measure what is the uh, voltage across the resistor so we can get what the current is and so the peak is 180 millivolts so it's pretty small voltage and that should get uh, bigger as we increase frequency so this is 20 hertz you can already see there's a, a significant increase here so let's the voltage at the peak is 4.68 volts And the peak across the resistor is 330 millivolts. I'm going to go up to 50 hertz. And I'm going to need to change the scale here. Let's change the scale on uh, both of them. So at 50 hertz, the voltage across all three elements is 3.5 volts. And the voltage across only the resistor looks like um, it's bouncing between 590 and 610 millivolts. So we can say uh, 600 millivolts. Okay, now I've increased the frequency to 100 hertz. And we can see the voltage across all three is 2.3 volts and the voltage across just the resistor is now up to uh, seven, let's say 760 millivolts. At 
you know, 200 hertz and the voltage across all three is 1.41 volt and we have 830 millivolts across the resistor and next we'll go up to 500 hertz the first thing to notice at 500 hertz is the signals are much more in phase so now the current is almost in line with the voltage across all three that means that we're getting to the point where the impedance of the inductor matches the impedance of the capacitor and right here across all three we have looks like uh, 900 millivolts across all three and then across just the resistor is 830 millivolts The next measurement I typically would have made would have been at uh, 1000 hertz, but I noticed on the way up right at 700 hertz, it looks like the signals are aligned and uh, both are showing about 800 and well, it's also between 830 and 850 uh, millivolts. And that's gonna be um, across everything. So it looks like the impedance of the inductor and capacitor may be canceling each other out around this frequency. At 1000 Hertz you can see that now the current which is represented by the the blue trace because that's the voltage across the resistor is lagging a little bit compared to the voltage across all three. So at 1 kilohertz the voltage across all three components is hovering around 900 millivolts and the voltage across just the resistor is down about 850 millivolts. At 2 kilohertz I'm seeing 1.19 volts across all three and then for just the resistor I'm seeing 830 millivolts. At 5 kilohertz, you can see they're getting more out of phase, and now I have 2.26 volts across all three, and then across just the resistor, I have, it's bouncing around a little bit, 770 millivolts. Okay, at 10 kilohertz, get a peak of 3.46 across all three, and then looking at across the resistor is... Uh, it's bouncing around 600 millivolts, 610, 610 millivolts. Now I'll go up to 20 kilohertz, and looks like the peak voltage is up to 4.36 volts. And then on the resistor, I have about 400 millivolts. At 50 kilohertz, I'm seeing 4.84 volts. And then across the resistor, I'm seeing 172 millivolts. Now up at 100 kilohertz, the peak voltage is back up to about five volts. And if we look at the voltage across the resistor, that's down to 92 millivolts.